Thank you so much for, for being here, for gathering with us once again as we come together as Columbus City Council, as the City of Columbus, um, as a community to celebrate the contributions of African Americans in the past, present, and celebrate what we will do to move our community forward in the future. I want to welcome you to our 2023 Black History Month celebration in the Poindexter Award Ceremony. Before we go any further, let's celebrate the awardees this morning for their work for their contributions to moving this city forward. We call council chambers, or we call this building the People's House. And if this is the People's House, City Hall, then this room, this chamber, is our living room. This is the people's living room where we come together in good times and bad times uh, to celebrate um, and to refocus ourselves on the work at hand. This is where the public comes to voice their hopes and their frustrations. It's a place where we come together to make this city work better for everyone. That work wouldn't be possible without my colleagues. Would you help me uh, recognize President Pro Tem Rob Dorns, <laughs> Councilmember Nick Bankston, <laughs> Councilmember Shayla Favor, <laughs> Councilmember Mitchell J. Brown, <laughs> Councilmember Emmanuel Remy, <laughs> and Councilmember Barossa De Padilla. We are also joined with so many dignitaries that are in the house, and just because I see him standing up, he gets to keep on standing. Former council member Fred Ranzier. Mr. Ranzier is in the house. We have Upper Arlington Council Member Yukimi. Is Yukimi here? Where's Council Member? There she is. We have our Inspector General, Jacqueline Hendricks, here. Inspector General, where are you? There she is. Thank you so much for being with us. We have my representative, my representative, Latina Humphrey. Where's representative? We have my friend, Re Reynoldsburg City Council Member Meredith Lawson Rowe. We have my mentor, former rep, Larry Price. Where's Rep Price? We have our judge, Judge Jared Skinner. And it is so dangerous to start naming elected officials because you're always nervous you're going to miss one. Did I miss an elected official in our community? We're also joined here by many folks in the clergy. I see past um, keynote speaker, our Judge Mike, uh, Pastor Mike, how are you, sir? Thank you so much for being here. And last but certainly not least, um, would you help me celebrate our keynote speaker, our Congresswoman Joyce Beatty? We have a, a great morning ahead of us. We are going to be prompt. I told the speakers, please don't forgive the shorter introductions, but this is a long day of celebration in our community. We also want to recognize the amazing work uh, that we will celebrate, and I know a lot of us will, will come together uh, at lunchtime for the United Negro College Fund uh, annual um, uh, mayor's luncheon. So we will uh, be moving along, but we are going to uh, make sure that we do due diligence and take the time to celebrate um, these amazing folks who are moving our community forward. Um, this annual event celebrates our community's heritage while acknowledging that we have a bright future ahead of us. I hope we can use our time together to reflect on this year's theme of black resistance and celebrate how black people in Columbus have worked collectively to serve and strengthen our community. Now we, uh, to help us move things along, um, we asked one of my good friends, my AUC brother, Atlanta University, Atlanta University Center. He's CAU. I'm Morehouse, but he is my good friend. Would you help me celebrate uh, the anchor of 10 on 10 TV's uh, evening news, uh, my friend Andrew Kinsey? Good morning. Good morning, and thank you to Council. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here with you, as Council President so eloquently said. I am a HBCU grad also a member of the greatest fraternity in the land, Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, and a son of the Deep South. So it is both an honor and a privilege to be with you this morning as we celebrate not only black history, but the history of African-Americans here in the city of Columbus, the contributions to this country, because despite what you see on the news in some parts of our country, black history is indeed American history. Yeah. 
And it is quite fitting. The theme for this year is Black Resistance, the theme celebrating our resistance to the historic and ongoing oppression. Although the fight is not over, we can still reflect on our community's successes and the battles we have won. This morning, you are definitely in for a treat. Treat. We have some music, an award ceremony, and a powerful message from our keynote speaker, Congresswoman Joyce Beatty. So let's not prolong it at all. Let's get started with Bishop Donald J. Washington. He'll start us off with prayer, followed by Lift Every Voice and Sing, led by the Briggs High School Choir. Shall we pray? Our Father who art in heaven, we are to recall thy nearness as we begin this day. Thank you, dear God, for allowing us to sleep and slumber all night long. And you allowed us to get up to see a brand new day that we've never seen before. We thank you, God, because we realize that in well-doing we shall reap if we faint not. We acknowledge that we live in a world where there are guided missiles but misguided men. We live in a world where those are those who put more emphasis on the stagnant waters of a cesspool than upon human lives. Thank you, God, that we are not those that marginalize people because of their ethnicity. We thank you, dear God, because we realize that we live in a world where righteousness wears rags and rascality wears a purple rose. But here we are today, together as one body, one union, one people. Help us to continue to do our work well and find happiness in what we do. May our growth in spiritual knowledge find an equal growth in spiritual character. What we recognize for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
Would you help me give our students a round of applause for that amazing rendition of the Black National Anthem? You know, contrary to popular belief, uh, when the National Anthem, uh, the U.S. National Anthem was written, many folks in this room were not included in that. And so it is with great honor that our students are here to carry on the African-American history <laughs> through song. In her award-winning poem, And Still I Rise, Maya Angelou, in part, so confidently proclaims that you may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may tread me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I rise. Her words not only reflect the essence of the black American struggle, but it also serves as a love letter to black women, reminding us that in times of great opposition, there is a power that rests within you to not simply overcome, but to bring forth change that will impact generations to come. Today, I am honored to introduce a leader that has faced her fair share of opposition throughout her career as a public servant. And despite these obstacles that seek to deter her mission, Congresswoman Joyce Beatty continues to rise, not only as a trailblazer, but as an historic change agent fighting on our behalf every single day in Washington, D.C. Congresswoman Beatty has proudly represented Ohio's third congressional district since 2013. She is a member of the Congressional Black Caucus, having recently served as the chair in the 117th Congress. Congresswoman Beatty also serves on the exclusive House Committee on Financial Services as a ranking member of the Subcommittee on National Security, Illicit Finance, and International Financial Institutions. Prior to her service in the U.S. House of Representatives, Congresswoman Beatty was a member of the Ohio House of Representatives for five terms. During her tenure in the Ohio House, she rose once again to become the first female Democratic House leader in Ohio's history. Now, some would reduce our Congresswoman and her illustrious career to simply being black girl magic. <laughs> but as the only black woman on city council, I am here to tell you that there is nothing easy nor magical about working and leading in a space that has not always seen you as a person nor as an equal colleague whose voice and vision truly matter. So no, the Congresswoman's success is not because of magic, but the result of her relentless dedication, boldness, and resilience. The Congresswoman always leads with the two most powerful words that we can ever say, and that is thank you. And so it is with great distinction that I have the honor of giving a woman that I consider to be a mentor, a fellow Daytonian, and my soror of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a public acknowledgement of appreciation to thank you for your dedication to public service and commitment to our community. My name is Shayla Favor, and I hope Congresswoman Beatty approves this message. Please help me and welcome our Congresswoman Joyce Beatty. Oh, you can do better than that. You can do better than that for that introduction. 
Let me say, my sister, thank you. From one magical black sister who earned our way. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, and good morning. It is always good to be home. Thank you to my friend, colleague, president of City Council, Shannon Harden. And to all of the county city council members, thank you for inviting me today to your program, Black Resistance, to honor, to commemorate, to study Black History Month. At a time when we acknowledge and salute the endless achievements and unparalleled legacies left behind by black heroes and sheroes whose shoulders we stand on. And thank you for acknowledging our Greek sororities and fraternities. So I would be remiss if I didn't say I too bring greetings from Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Now my time begins, <laughs> President Hart. But I want to first acknowledge and congratulate all of our 2023 Poindexter Award winners. Thank you for your service. You have made a profound impact in our community and embodied the legacy that the Reverend Dr. James Preston Poindexter, an abolitionist, an activist, a pioneer, and the first black Columbus City Council member. So your work, awardees, not only makes a difference in the present, but it builds off of the legacy of our ancestors and it sets the foundation for a future generation of leaders like we just heard as they lift it their voices. Let's give an applause for that choir. They are our children. So let's start with this black history. Since 1976, the United States has designated February as Black History Month, celebrating and honoring the achievements of black Americans. This year, the nation's theme is black resistance. Black Americans have resisted historic and ongoing oppressions in all forms, especially in the racial terrorism of lynching, of racial pogroms, police killings, and since the arrival of us being on these shores. As the societal and political forces escalate to limit us access to the right to vote, access to the ballot, eliminated the teaching of black history and worked to push us back into the 1890s. But we can only rely on the capacity to resist. For black Americans, the connection to resistance began in 1619 when enslaved Africans were brought here to the colonial Virginia. This resistance persisted and stretched through the Civil Wars, Reconstruction, Jim Crow, the Civil Rights Movement, Black Lives Matter, and it continues today. You see, Black America has literally institutionalized resistance by building strong, supportive communities, Shannon, Black churches, Bishop, and black universities, and yes, the Congressional Black Caucus. They have all been founded to ensure that African American success was not determined by a society that denied them their own rights. So as you bring a deeper focus to black history in February, there are countless ways to discuss resistance. But my friends, let me tell you, it is unchallengeable and indisputable that part of history, black history, is American history. And let us remember that and commensurate its role. Because you see, black history shaped the nation. Today's program will help us appreciate black history and why we must resist to fight, the, uh, fight and unshackle 
the years of injustice and harness justice. This should not be tough. This should not be touchy. But my friends, it is still today. Black people have consistently pushed the United States to live up to the ideals of freedom, liberty, and justice for all. As the chair emeritus of the Congressional Black Caucus, I witnessed the power of black resistance in communities across this country. It was with your support that I went to Congress and I was able to leverage my position as chairwoman of one of the most powerful and the largest caucus in the United States Congress. But let me just share with you our diversity, our pro productivity, our historical appointments allowed me to shepherd in legislation, executive actions, meetings with the President of the United States and ambassadors and prime ministers and presidents of more than 26 countries. This little black girl from Ohio. We were able to pass law a few months ago and have the President of these United States sign Juneteenth as a national holiday, joining Martin Luther King Day. It was this black lady that allowed us to give to President Biden the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act. It was the Congressional Black Caucus that led for the country the George Floyd Justice Sean Walton in Police Act. It was us that allowed six black chairmen of the nation's largest committees. This is worth a roll call. This is worth a roll call when you think of the richest and the wealthiest nation in this country that a black woman, Auntie Maxine Waters, chaired the Financial Services Committee. That a black woman, Eddie Bernice Johnson from Texas, not only designed, wrote the CHIPS Act of 56 billion dollars. She was the chair of science and technology. And let's go to the brothers, Larry Price. You see, it was a black man over education and labor, Bobby Scott, an attorney. It was a black man that was over homeland security and chaired the January 6th commission. <laughs> Benny Thompson from Mississippi. You see, it was a black man for resistance when we talked about agriculture. You think black folks don't know about rural America mm. and farming, but from, jo from Atlanta, Georgia, David Scott chaired agriculture. Let me wrap it up with foreign affairs. Have you ever heard that a black man, an attorney from New York, Greg Meeks, chair of foreign affairs. You see, he took me to Sierra Leone. He took me to Tanzania. He took me to Liberia and the Ivory Coast. This little black girl from Columbus, Ohio. You want to talk about black resistance? Black resistance has captured America's attention to organizations in corporate America across this nation, reflecting on some of the things that we know in the past has been abusive to us. But you see, we are now historicizing it. You see, we are living indeed in a time of an inflection point in this nation's history. But my friends, old battles have become new again. Old battles have become new again. You see, on the first day, on the first day of Black History Month, the college board announced significant changes in its advancement placement of African American studies, Nana. You see, they said that we were no longer relevant and we were not going to allow our children, black, white, or brown, Lord asked, to have black history, which we know is American history. <laughs> Governor of Florida took it up on himself to say that he was going to remove books that dealt with people who looked like me, people who looked like the children who sang, lift up our voices this morning, Columbus, Ohio. That's just wrong. 
That's just gone wrong. We know that diversity has captured the nation's attention. We know corporate America waves its flags of diversity and promotes its diversity managers. We know that they put more than $60 billion out there for George Floyd justice and policing. But where are the results? Where are the results? Where are the results? We know that people of color constitute 40% of the United States population, remain frustrating and unrepresented in business, holding only 16% of the board seats on Fortune 500 companies. Let me just tell you, there are only four of them, and let me just tell you how bad and wrong this is, Janet Jackson. You see, it's bad because I can name all four of them. It's even worse because I know all four of them. Black America resistance is why we are here today. And I thank you, city council, for this. Thank you, Columbus, Ohio. Thank you, Columbus, Ohio, for giving us stories to tell. The stories of a freed slave, Matilda Gales, who lived to be 117 years old. And she was perhaps the oldest person in the United States in 1906. Stories of Salesville sluggers, black owned, our black owned baseball team. Stories of Burnside Heights, where the residents built their homes with the bricks that were originally used for Broad Street. Oh, black resistance. So let me just tell you, the black community on the Near East Side, Bishop Washington, the historic black community, the artist Amina Robinson, who gave us a long Water Street series, black Americans were the texture and the fiber of Columbus, the cloth of culture, the home of jazz singer Nancy Wilson, poet and activist Anna Bishop, who called the black Berry Patch Home, the Beatty Family's Novelty Food Bar in Mamie Moore Park and Carl Brown Shopping Center and Jenkins Towers in Point Dexter Village. Yet, black history is more than just talking about the past. It's about learning from our past and charting a new path forward to pick up their baton and carry it, Shayla, to carry it forward, to confront the systemic racism, the discrimination, and the barriers that we still fight through. So let me bring this to a closure by saying, we're going to move forward. We're going to move forward because we can go from a Dr. James Point Dexter to a bishop Donna Washington. We can go from a Reverend Dr. Leon Troy to a Dr. Keith Troy. We can go from a Justice Robert Duncan to a Justice Yvette McGee Brown. We can go from a Dr. Billy Hicks to a Dr. BJ and Shari Hicks. We can go from a Urban League director, Nimron Allen, to a Stephanie Hightower. We can go from an attorney, Otto Beatty Jr., to Sean Walton. We can go from an honorable Janet Jackson to an honorable Lori Beatty Buck. We can go from an executive leadership council, Judy Barker, to an, ex uh, an executive leadership council, Karen Morrison. We can go from an NAACP, Mamie Moore Beatty, to Nana Watson. We can go from a Lucy McBath to a Melissa Thomas St. Clair. We can go from a, we can go from a Bobby Duncan to a Algernon Marbley. You see, we can go from a Amina Robinson to a Black Lives Matter art. You see, we can go from a chief. James Jackson to a Chief Elaine Bryant. You see, we can go from a Toni Morrison to a Will Haywood. You see, we can go from a Nancy Wilson to an Amra Nicole. You see, we can go from 
a Jeanette Bradley, to a CEO, Charles Hillsman. You see, we can go from a mayor, Carl Stokes, to a mayor, Michael B. Coleman. And yes, we can go from a mayor, Michael B. Coleman, to a Shannon Harden. You see, black resistance, black resistance. And let me close by saying, I stand here in this magical moment as a sister who earned her way with black resistance. But I say thank you to you. Thank you to you because you sent me to Congress. And I understand black resistance. I understand that when our children don't have broadband, that I needed to stand up and vote for the infrastructure bill. And it was this black woman, because of black resistance, that stood the test of time and brought our people together to pass a 1.2 trillion bill. It is because of your sending me to Congress that we had an inflation reduction bill. Now what you need to remember about it, black people die of diabetes and we put a cap on insulin. What you need to realize that our black senior citizens can't always afford their medical prescriptions, so we lowered the cost. You see, sending me to Washington gave us the CHIPS bill, $56 billion, and I'm just saying 20 billion came to the outskirts of Columbus, Ohio. I'm just saying that lastly, on this day of black history and black resistance, just three days ago, I entered into the United States Congress a bill that says black history is American history. I'm just saying that we're gonna call on the American Board of, Rel of, Board of Educations across this country and tell them why, why, why is it not in the academic academies for black history to be included in the competitive grants that go to teachers across this nation who teach American history and civics? We're going to stand up. If you want to know what black resistance is, it's about saying black history is American history. And Shayla, I approve your message, but more importantly, I'm Congresswoman Joyce Bailey, and I approve this message. God bless you. Black resistance, Columbus, Ohio. Love you. Well, 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 well. I think we can take an offering after that one, Congresswoman. <laughs> Thank you for your work and for allowing yourself to get into good trouble. At this time, we are going to move forward with our Poindexter Award presentation. The Poindexter Awards are given in honor of Reverend James Preston Poindexter, a giant of his time and transformational leader here in Columbus and in the African-American history here. As you know, Poindexter worked as a civil rights activist, Columbus School Board member, a Baptist minister, a conductor on the Underground Railroad, and was the first African-American member of council serving from 1880 to 1884. James Poindexter ventured to Columbus in 1838, which at that time was the largest African-American population in Ohio. He opened a barbershop over in High Street uh, right across from the state house as soon as he became a conductor to help those runaway sw slaves find freedom. Now, during the Civil War, Poindexter and his wife formed the Colored Soldiers Relief Society to help give soldiers and their families assistance when the state of Ohio failed to support its black veterans. Dedicated to uplifting the minds, bodies, and spirits of black people, he joined and later became a minister at the Second Baptist Church. Poindexter formed the Anti-Slavery Baptist Church and led his church for years until the congregation rejoined the Second Baptist Church in 1858 when 
he, where he remained for about 40 years. Now, because of his African, European, and American Indian ancestry, he was allowed to vote and be active in politics. In the 1880s and 1890s, he served as a trustee at the School for the Blind of Ohio University and Wilberforce University. Great back history there. Let's give a round of applause for the work and the legacy of Mr. Poindexter. Let's welcome the 2023 Poindexter Awards recipients. Let's bring up council member Nick Bankston to introduce our first winner. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Happy Black History Month. Um, council President, we're gonna have to talk about this program a little later. Um, I don't know how I got to go after Congresswoman Beatty. Uh, <laughs> Next year, we're going to move the keynote to after the awards. Uh, no, I am honored to present our first uh, James Preston Poindexter Award on behalf of Columbus City Council uh, to my friend, activist, and community leader, Sean L. Walton, Jr. Uh, Mr. Walton is a highly talented, talented litigator and specializes in serious personal injury, wrongful death, and civil rights cases right here in the city of Columbus. Mr. Walton's work at Walton Brown uh, uh, LLP centers victims' needs, and he is unafraid to seek justice in all its forms. His firm has filed over 450 lawsuits, recovered $16 million for their clients, and attained over 2,500 successful clients. He is also a nationally recognized attorney who speaks frequently about civil rights, police misconduct, best practices in personal injury, and civil rights litigation in interviews with national media outlets. Mr. Walton was named a rising star in Ohio by super lawyers, which is an honor that is only given to two and a half percent of lawyers in America. And a top 40 under 40 by the National Trial Lawyers, the American Society of Legal Advocates, the National Black Lawyers, and the National Academy of Personal Injury Lawyers. But more than his legal and work accomplishments, Sean is unapologetically a fighter for justice. Not just for the clients that he serves, but for all those that suffer injustice in our community. Now some may call him a rebel rouser, an agitator, a disturber of the peace, well, they also call Dr. King and Reverend Poindexter that, so I think you're in good company. But for me, I call him friend. I call him the conscious voice of our community and my generation, always speaking truth to power and pushing us to be a more just and a more perfect society. You truly embody the essence of this award and the spirit of James Poindexter. But let me say this, this honor is not about what you have accomplished, but more importantly, what you will accomplish and the change that you will bring forth in this community for black folks and everyone that suffers injustice. So on behalf of myself and my colleagues and the 906,000 residents that call Columbus home, we thank Sean Walton for his dedication to being a committed advocate for Columbus and all of those in our community you are black history. You are Columbus's history. Our 2023 James Preston Poindexter Award honoree, Mr. Sean L. Walton, Jr. There we go, Alpha Phi Alpha in the building. I appreciate that. I was, I was, I was, I was gonna uh, shout that out. <laughs> yeah, and I, I appreciate you, uh, Council Councilman Bankston, for uh, not only that the introduction, but for being a buffer between the Congresswoman and I. So I, I appreciate you for uh, for taking that from me. Um, you know, I, I just want to first say how um, humbled I am to to be standing here today and to be amongst such uh, legends and, and icons in the city. 
and how blessed I am to be able to, to call, uh, call them, call all of them friends, mentors, and uh, inspirations. Uh, I have so much that I wanted to say that I could not figure out what to say, so I, I just decided to speak from the heart because that's often um, what leads me. As I reflected upon uh, black history, you know, as we're celebrating black history and, and I reflected upon the fact that we're recognizing the role that black resistance plays in that history, um, I, I really just started to think about how truly exhausting black resistance can be. You know, we celebrate black history, we celebrate the achievements, we celebrate James Preston Poindexter and all that he accomplished. But Mr. Poindexter died and he was noted as the second uh, longest serving advocate for black people in the country at the time behind Booker T. Washington. And that was in 1907. He died at, I believe, 87 years old. So he spent his life dedicated to black resistance. And while we recognize the impact that he had, we, we don't think about the impact that it had on his life and the trauma that he suffered and the sacrifices he made so that other black people did not have to suffer that same trauma. And he died in 1907, and here we are in 2023, and we're still resisting. And so as we're recognizing and, and celebrating that resistance and what it has accomplished, as the Congressman pointed out, we have so much further to go, and we have to recognize that as we're, as we're here. So, you know, um, James Preston Poindexter was so many things. He was a, a, a council member, a politician, a, a, a preacher. He was also an abolitionist, and he recognized that sometimes you just can't reform. It takes radical action, and, that, and, and that's what it takes. And, and, and so often we get caught up in the fact that we have a role in the, in the systems as opposed to recognizing our collective power within those systems. So as we, as, as we uh, reflect on history and, and I think about, you know, James Preston Poindexter and Otto Betty Jr., who I've been um, honored to take over his practice, you know, and, and, his, uh, and to uh, continue his legacy and how much that means to me. I fight for black people in our current state but I also fight for the legacies of those like James Preston Poindexter and Otto Beatty Jr. so that their sacrifices were not in vain because they resisted and their lives were dedicated to sacrifice and resisting. And I look forward to a world, to a city, where we're not focused so much on the resistance and that black resistance, but we're focused on black joy, black happiness, and black healing. And so as we, again, reflect on black history, I challenge us all to honor the legacies of so many before us by continuing that sacrifice, making it easier on all of us by recognizing our collective power and that we not only have politicians and preachers, but we have people. And the power of the people is so much stronger than any system in this country, and we can overcome and we can win. Thank you. Buenos días, mi gente. Hello. Happy Black History Month. I'm Councilmember Lourdes Barroso de Padilla, and I'm going to take just a quick point of privilege because I don't often get them, but I have them today. Um, first of all, if this is the people's living room, uh, whoever sat me next to um, Bishop Washington, thank you because he brought a little church up in here. <laughs> and just the healing that I needed this morning. Um, secondly, I wanna also say thank, I'm thankful that my name is Barroso and not Bankston, um, cause that was a tough, I, you are always, the, the, you're never an act to follow, period. But I, my third point of gratitude is that I also wanna say, um, as a Columbus kid who was born and raised on the east side, when I look at this panel, this is the panel that molded and shaped me. And as I look out, as I look out at this crowd, I know that there are fellow East Side kids, East Side little girls and boys, who, especially as I look at this panel, was shaped by fellow East Side uh, boys and girls who literally blazed the trail for people like me. So I want to say thank you. Um, 
And it's interesting because um, Councilmember Bankston talked about his relationship to Sean Walton. And as I looked at our list of honorees today, I was very excited because this is such a Columbus story and such a Columbus kid story. But uh, our next recipient, um, when I say she's my friend and I say we go back like babies and pacifiers, I literally mean we went all the way back to Ms. Swanson's home economics class at Eastmore High School. I know I have some fellow warriorettes in here, and I can confidently say that I am sure that at no time did either one of us think that we would be here today. <laughs> that neither one of us would think that we would be in the positions that we are in now. Um, both by tragedy, both by circumstance, and both by perseverance. And I'm not going to look at you because you're going to make me cry. So Mothers of Murdered Children Columbus was founded by Melissa Thomas St. Clair, a longtime Columbus resident and educator in the Columbus City Schools after her son Anthony was senselessly taken at 22 years old here in our city. Ms. Thomas St. Clair became heavily involved in community organizing. In 2020, Melissa founded the nonprofit Mothers of Murdered Children Columbus as a way to advocate on behalf of mothers affected by the mental physical, and emotional impacts of gun violence in Columbus. Mothers of, Murdered Children, Columbus. Mothers of Murdered Columbus Children has worked tirelessly since its founding in 2020 to change the conversation about gun violence. From informing the public, to offering group sessions, to providing a safe place for mothers to share their journey, to collaborating with other organizations, Mothers of Murdered Columbus Children is shining a light in the fight for community action and policy change. My friend has dedicated her life to service first as an educator and literally turned her heart inside out and showed us all the fierceness, the fierce love of a mother by founding Mothers of Murdered Columbus Children and by supporting the families and the mothers who are most affected by gun violence in our community. So I, along with my city council colleagues, thank you, Melissa, and all of the mothers of, mother, of Mothers of Murdered Columbus Children for your dedication to keeping our great city and its residents safe and for providing a healing, peaceful place for our families. We honor you as a recipient of the 2023 James Preston Poindexter Award. Thank you, Father. You know something is sent by God when you have to resist the enemy. And he's been trying me for two days. And in this moment, I see why. Because this moment is God's mission. Council President Harden, council members, my friend, Sean and I go back before this, Congresswoman. Mom, please stand. Please give it up for my mom. She is my black history. Mike St. Clair, please stand, my husband. If it wasn't for black history, I wouldn't have been able to marry that man. I am going to, I wrote something this morning giving honor to my sisters and I have to read it. And um, now I've gotten my emotions so I can't even use my phone. What has happened to my life? Here we go. We are family. I've got all my sisters in me. Mothers of murder, Columbus children, and it is a mouthful, but. These women are the true superheroes. When a woman loses a child, especially to violence, it rips out your soul. Some don't ever return to a mental, stable life. Some begin to survive 
but never live again. This sisterhood learns to live again together. God led us together to learn to live again. We use one another's pain for purpose. Resistance, we resist the opportunity to continue to lead with hate because we have every reason to. We lead with positivity, prayer, and our angel's protection to take the most unimaginable pain and use it as our superpower. God is the forefront and foundation of our mission. Together we are a force that will turn this city and so many more around. We work by Dr. Luther King's code of change. A few quotes that embody our mission. The ultimate measure of a man or a woman is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he or she stands at times of challenge and controversy. These women embody that quote because how could you imagine standing with a firm heart and your child was snatched from you by a senseless act? Quote, we must accept finite disappointment but never lose infinite hope. Quote, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. We stand firm together in these streets based on a mother's love, not hate. Forgiveness is not an occasional act, it is a permanent attitude. Quote, I have decided to stick with love Hate is too great a burden to bear. Quote, love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. Quote, there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular, but he must take it because conscience tells him it is right. When we, got, when we found it in August 2020 at the height of George Floyd, who would have thought that there would be some sisters that said, let's take the hand of CPD and turn this around. You cannot keep resisting with hate because how can you hold someone accountable with hate? They're only going to resist back. Out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. And lastly, quote, the time is always right to do what is right. So at this time, Carla Richardson and Latanya Nichols stand, two mothers who have lost two children to violence in the city of Columbus. Sisters stand. These are all women who have lost their children to violence right here in the city of Columbus, but stand here. Sean Walton said to me right here, y'all roll deep. I accept this award on behalf of each of you and those who couldn't be here because I am not a one-man show. You guys come out here and face this fight even when it's hard and I love you. And I end with this. Am I my sister's keeper? Yes, I, am. I love you. Again, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I am uh, truly honored to introduce my friend. And I say my friend because we've known each other for a very, very long time. Janet E. Jackson, as the 2023 recipient of the Columbus City Council's James Preston Point Dexter Award.
We were told to be brief, so I'm going to attempt to try to do that, but I could not possibly acknowledge all of the things that Janet has accomplished in one or two minutes, So, but I'm going to take a brief stab at it. Janet Jackson is a woman of many firsts. She was the first woman in African American to lead the United Way of Central Ohio, directing the nonprofit as a CEO for 14 years. Before the United Way, Janet served six years as the Columbus City Attorney. It was the first woman in African American to hold that position. She served as city's chief legal advisor. Before the city attorney's office, Janet served as a Franklin County Municipal Court judge as the first African-American female judge in Franklin County history. <laughs> and more recently, Janet was appointed as the first chair of the Columbus Civilian Review Board. <laughs> Under Janet's leadership, the United Way of Central Ohio expanded its mission to reduce poverty, build strong, resilient communities. Her work in the United Way has left a lasting impact on all of Central Ohio. Janet, you are black history. Yeah. I, along with my city council colleagues, admire the resiliency and leadership you have demonstrated throughout your successful career. We honor you as a recipient of the 2023 James Preston Poindexter Award. Ladies and gentlemen, Janet Jackson. To my former client, Mitchell Brown, I say thank you for the introduction. To my Shiro, my Congresswoman, Joyce Beatty, to President Hardin and the other members of council, and I'd say most importantly to each of the other award winners, I am so proud to be in this group. Thank you. Almost 52 years ago, a very young black woman stepped into a Piedmont prop plane, leaving southern racist Virginia, red clay country, tobacco growing country, to fly to Columbus, Ohio. I came here to attend Wittenberg University, got a great education, and it was there when I met a young man that I fell in love with. And I lost a bet to that young man. He wanted me to go to law school. And I resisted him in about every way possible. We made a bet. I lost. And to the young women, I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> <laughs> I went to law school, but Ohio pulled me back. I came back to start at the Attorney General's office. So I'm not going to go through all of my career. You've just heard it. But I was so privileged to serve the citizens of Columbus in all of those positions. And I do remember with great fondness my race for the Franklin County Judgeship in 1987. I can see faces of people who worked tirelessly for me. And although he's no longer with us, I say thank God to Amos Lynch. I swear he had me in absolutely every publication, you know, that year. So, so the work was, was varied. I have to admit that when I came in today and I passed the seat where I sat in for six years as the Columbus City Attorney, it brought tears to my eyes. I love this community. It's my home. I allegedly retired <laughs> in November of 2017. And as three of my siblings are in much warmer climates today playing golf, I wondered what I did wrong. But no work has been more important than chairing the first the Safety Advisory Commission, 
And I say thank you to the other 16 members of that commission that worked for 18 months to develop 80 recommendations to present to the city as to how to improve our police department. A special thank you to Mayor Genther and to Council President Hardin for leading the effort for this community to pass legislation to create the Civilian Police Review Board and the Office of the Inspector General, my friend who's up there somewhere. We've now served for almost two years. And so again, I want to say thank you to the mayor for appointing me chair and to council because you confirmed my appointment. This is some of the most important work that I've done here in this city. And I don't know if this is being televised today or not, but you can go out and spread the word. There are vacancies on that board. It's time for people and I call you youngsters when you're like 45 to 55, right? <laughs> it is time for you to step up and to apply for a position on that board because there are vacancies and we need you. And this work is critical. It is critical to Columbus. Thank you. Thank you for blessing me the way you have for all of these years. Good morning. Thank you for joining us here in Council Chambers for our celebration of Black History Month. Uh, it is my honor to serve with my colleagues on Columbus City Council, and um, it is particularly an honor to be here with you all this morning when we're celebrating black history here in Columbus. The folks that are up here receiving these awards are the embodiment of that. Uh, I remember moving to Columbus well over a decade ago and hearing names like Beatty, hearing names like Jackson, and thinking these are the leaders of our community, that's who shaped Columbus. And I think one of the most important things we're talking about here today is the folks that are now receiving their awards for their service currently. But you're talking about folks like Chair Jackson, who continues to fail at retirement, thankfully. Um, and as all of these award winners have continued to mentor the next generation of black leaders here in Columbus. And let's give a round of applause for all of them who's dedicated their time to that mentorship. Um, I know all of us keep saying we have a tough job following the, the folks before us, but uh, as a practicing attorney, it is incredibly difficult to introduce the most senior judge in the uh, jurisdiction that you practice in. So I'm going to do, do my best. And that's, that's a look right there. So I'm going to keep it moving. Uh, <laughs> uh, it is my honor to introduce Chief Judge Agile Marbley as a recipient, recipient today of 2023 Columbus City County Point Dexter Award. As many of you know, Judge Marbley serves as the Chief Judge of the United States District Court for the Southern District of Ohio and is the first African American judge to serve in that capacity. Serving in that role, he has been a champion for civil rights, including voting rights, policing, and housing discrimination. He, in his 24 years serving as a district judge, he's presided over some of the most important cases in Central House history. And I also want to take a moment to acknowledge some of the smaller moments that folks may not know. Uh, judge Marble has continued during his time as judge to oversee our uh, naturalization ceremonies for new Americans in our community. And if you have not had an opportunity to be at one of those ceremonies, please, please do so. I think the ability for Judge Marbley to embodiment of tell folks how their responsibility as Americans joining our, our, our as, a, as a citizen in our country is incredibly important. I think as Congresswoman Beatty alluded to about the importance of voting, Judge Marbley does not let folks leave that room without understanding what their role is in this country to continue to be a voter, to make sure that they protect themselves and their neighbors to exercise their franchise. I could list a number of boards, important boards and commissions that Judge Marbley has, has served on over the years, um, but we would be here for quite a while given the length, length of his career. Uh, there are two I do want to mention that I think is particularly important um, as from his service. Uh, he's a, been a past Board of Trustees member at The Ohio State University and is currently a member of the Nationwide Children's Hospital Board as well. 
Uh, I also want to mention in the past, because uh, near and dear to my heart, he served on the, um, the board of Big Brothers Big Sisters. When you talk about that mentorship, so many young folks in our community um, have been connected to their mentors through that organization, so thank you for doing that. Um, Judge Marbley, along with my colleagues and I, just want to say thank you for your contributions uh, to Columbus and continuing to serve in a way that uh, demonstrates the leadership uh, and importance of, for not only attorneys in our community, but for those that look towards the justice system as being what it should be. So thank you for your service and congratulations. Judge Marbley. I want to thank um, first um, President Hardin. Thank you, President Pro Tem Dorans and members of City Council for honoring me and these outstanding honorees. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but it's not often that you experience that feeling of inadequacy that, that I've experienced after being on this panel with with all of these outstanding honorees because I was sitting there saying to myself, what am I going to say? I'm just a federal judge. These people have lived a life. They have embodied these people. And I, I was there at the federal courthouse, at my courthouse, uh, when we acknowledged uh, the mothers. Um, we had our U.S. attorney here, and it was a moving ceremony. And it inspired many of us as judges because the work that we do is important. We can't repair your grief, but we can enforce the law. <clears throat> I want to thank uh, my dear friend, Congresswoman Beatty, for her inspiring words. In fact, I don't know if you all can see it, but this, this podium is still reverberating. <laughs> From, from, from Joyce, I, you know, my mother is here today, and we Episcopalians, and if anybody's ever been to an Episcopal church, we're up and down with genuflecting, we're quiet, you know, it lasts 45 minutes, but my grandmother was a Baptist, and the, and, and the, and the pulpit used to shake. That's how you knew you were in church. And Joyce, thank you, because... The, you know, the benefit of going to church was that you, in, you left inspired. And whenever I'm with Joyce, I always leave inspired. Um, you know, she, she has really been a beacon of leadership in some very perilous uh, times, and she's there when we need her most, and I'm very proud of what she is doing. You know, I want to thank my, my family, my mother, my wife, my staff. They all came down. The clerk of court came. I have some law clerks who, who came and, you know, to support me, and I appreciate that. They know that I value service because, as Janet once told me, service is the rent that you pay for life on this earth. And so, I, you know, I'm honored to serve. Um. And I really want to thank more than probably anybody else, Janet Jackson. So <clears throat> this is a true story. When the position came open, I just happened to be at Janet's house one night and sitting at her table. And she said, you know, you should go after that position. I said, man, you know, I'm a lawyer. I enjoy doing what I do. I like trying cases. You know, I like my freedom. I like... I like what I have as a practicing attorney. I can choose the cases that I take, and you know I can make a difference. She said, "You know, you can't make a difference there that you can make on the bench." And she said, "You should, you should consider it." And all of you know Janet; she is convincing. You know, you might say she's convincing. She's she. She, she makes you do stuff. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so she convinced me to do it, but what she told me, the first thing she told me to do was to speak with my dear friend and mentor who's here today, Larry James. 
I went and spoke with Larry. He also makes you do whatever it is he wants you to do. And so between the two of them, I had no choice, and here I am today. And I certainly thank them for putting me in a position to do what I have done. Um, I could talk for a really long time, and I could never rival what my fellow honorees have said, so I'm not going to try. I'm, I'm just going to tell you that I am honored to serve my community. I've been in... Uh, I've been very fortunate to be in a position to do justice and love mercy. Serving in the judiciary, that branch that the French philosopher Montesquieu described as having neither sword nor purse. We don't have an army, nor do we have a budget. But we have judgment. We have judgment. And that's more important now than ever. We have, ladies and gentlemen, and it's really important in the people's living room to understand the fact that democracy is as we know it. Democracy as we appreciate is under siege. And unless you are a linear descendant of Van Winkle and you were asleep on January 6th, <laughs> democracy is under siege. And that was, you know, that was evidence of it. That was the pointed end of the stick. So with democracy under siege, the judicial branch, in my view, is the last line of defense. With the pen as my weapon and the living constitution as my guide, I will continue to discharge my constitutional obligations and ensure that all of our citizens, irrespective of race, gender, religion, sexual orientation, will enjoy the privileges to which we all live in a multiracial constitutional democracy. And that's what we're all entitled. Now I say that and everybody nods their head, and you should, because those are immutable principles. But here's the thing, everybody in this room has a responsibility to our democracy and to themselves. Then look, you, you were right. I do defend voting rights, and I'm proud of those decisions. But it doesn't mean anything if you don't vote. It doesn't mean anything if you don't vote. You know, so we can, I can write beautiful opinions about voting rights. And I could keep polls open. That was one of the first cases I had when I came up to the bench on, a, on an election night to keep the polls open. I kept them open. But if black people, if brown people, if people who are disenfranchised, feel dispossessed, don't vote, it means nothing. And we are at a point now where people who don't respect democracy, who embrace authoritarianism, are now taking the lead. Not just here, but throughout the throughout the world. I'm glad when Joyce travels because when she travels, I know that she behaves just as she behaves when she's here. She's fighting for the rights of people. But those rights are derivative rights often. They are derived from the Constitution and the rights set forth in them. Those rights can't be protected if you don't vote. And so our ministers need to tell their congregations. Our politicians need to be boots on the ground. And people need to get out and vote. It, you know, we, we can lead the horse to the water. But, you know, people are thirsty now. And they may not realize their thirst, but they're thirsty for freedom. They're thirsty for leadership. And they're thirsty for being able to live their lives. Women are thirsty to be left alone. They don't want people like me telling you what to do with your body. You know? You know? And, and, and so, you know, we will do what we do. We will protect constitutional rights. The judges on our courts do an excellent job day in and day out of protecting those rights. But once those rights are conferred upon you, 
you have to exercise them. So, you know, I probably see it too much. It, it'll probably come back to haunt me at some point in time. But then that'll just give me a reason to resist. <laughs> So, I want to thank you all uh, for this honor. I really do appreciate it. It'll inspire me to continue the spirit of Reverend J. Preston Poindexter, who with humility, clarity of vision, and tenacity, served Columbus to make this a better place to live, work and raise a family, and I implore all of you to continue to do so. Thank you very much, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. To my congresswoman, Andrew, thank you for keeping us all together today. Sean, thank you for your advocacy. Melissa, you know I love you. Thank you for your work and all the work of the ladies here today. Judge, chair, and, and last but certainly not least, my dear friend, Madam President, Nana Watson. It is my great honor to be here today to introduce our next award winner. It's fitting we honor the chapter that leads the charge in Columbus, Ohio. Almost 114 years ago to this day, I stand here to recognize the oldest and the boldest <laughs> civil rights organization in these United States of America. On February 12, 1909, 60 people gathered to get together to advocate with the likes of W.E.B. Du Bois, Ida B. Wells Barnett, Mary Church Terrell, and so many others to form the organization that honors this work today. The Columbus branch formed six years later, in the early days, planting the flag that we were here to promote human rights and eliminating racism in our community. Every great institution requires great leadership. In over 108 years, there have been plenty, but today it is my distinct honor to recognize my president, Nana Watson. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not quite there yet. We're almost there. We're almost there. Not only is she our president, but she's my dear friend. She's promoted programs under her leadership that affect everything that we do here in this city. He, she's promoted programs that, for those people that deserve second chances in our community by promoting record sealing programs. Worked with our unions, this council, working hard to, um, to do historic work with project labor agreements community benefits agreements, and from now on, every single piece of legislation that comes through this council will recognize the WMB participation on each and every one of them. So it is my distinct honor on behalf of my colleagues, finally, let me, let me, I'll finish it up here, I'll get on out of here. I appreciate the unwavering leadership and community advocacy that you give to all of us here in this community. Uh, on my council behalf, on my be behalf and the council, we honor you as the recipient of the 2023 James Preston Poindexter Award. Ms. Nana. I was a little anxious there, wasn't I? I don't know how long Councilman was going on. Good morning. I bring you greetings from the oldest and boldest civil rights organization in America. 
Thank you. In the Columbus branch of the NAACP is humbled to receive the James Poindexter Award. His philosophy was in line with ours. We fight for social justice to eradicate systematic discrimination. We fight to be the voice of the voiceless, to make sure that the smallest echoes are heard. Yes, we stand on James Poindexter's shoulder to continue the fight. This award does not belong to me, for I am merely the vessel that the Columbus branch has entrusted their leadership to, and I thank you. This award belongs to the executive committee and members of the NAACP who are engaged in this battle to achieve, advance, promote, and foster equity. When Brother Gates called me and shared that the NAACP had been nominated to receive the award, I was speechless, imagine that. <laughs> After regaining my composure, I shared with Brother Gates that we typically do not advocate for black people to be honored. But here's what we do. We advocate to change policy that adversely affects black people so that those policies can be positively changed. We advocated for body cameras for our police officers. We advocated Janet Jackson for the Civilian Review Board with subpoena power. We advocated for our building and trades union to include more blacks in the unions so that they can work on Columbus projects and make the wages that they rightfully deserve. Thank you. We advocated for AEP to change their policies as it relates to how they communicate to the black community about power outages. We called out racist behavior because unfortunately it exists in the 21st century and in this community. We made history when city council approved the community benefits agreement by establishing an advisory committee that would review and monitor contracts on city construction projects to ensure that black companies are included in the construction projects. Our work is not done. Just the other day, we pushed as we showed up on the steps of NBC4, and we demanded an apology for their racist wording on the so-called black national anthem. Our advocacy includes changes that have benefited the black community. I end by telling you that it is Black History Month and we continue to shape our history here in Columbus and we will continue to make noise by advocating for equality. Lastly, I want to thank my family for their support and they've allowed me to take this journey to fight social injustices in our community. I thank our community and political leaders, particularly members of council. When I call and rant, that's how they describe me, that I call and I rant about policy, I know you all do, about, poli about policies and procedures that need to be changed. Yet, they listened and they acted. On behalf of the Columbus branch of the NAACP, we are grateful to be the recipient of the Poindexter Award, and we thank you so much. You. Congratulations to all the recipients. Another round of applause to our recipients today. Your hard work does not go unnoticed. And as we as Omega Men say, we lift as we climb, and each of you are doing that in that capacity. And we hope that spills over to you in the audience today. Hopefully you leave here today with something that was said that will open your eyes, open your heart, spark some change, because the change lies within each one of us. We can be that resistance to making the change in our own way. You do, and in whatever platform you have, you don't have to be a council president, you don't have to be a lawyer, you don't have to hold a title. You, as an individual, can spark the change that can change this community. 
All right, so we are ending our program today with a song led by Charlene Free, We Shall Overcome. Again, we thank you for coming out and participating this morning in the city's Black History program. I want to thank you to council for the invite. Hopefully that didn't overturn my stay here and that you all will tune in tonight. Thank you so much for your love and thank you for your support. What a wonderful program this has been. We come together to celebrate ourselves. I know February is Black History Month, but we celebrate our history all year long. And this has been an excellent program for the city. I want you to know, City of Columbus, you are blessed. I'm supposed to be someplace else to start speaking at 1130, but I told them I was still with the city, so they've given me a 20-minute window, so I'm very grateful for that. So this has been wonderful. Representative Beatty, you are a class act. Nobody can follow that. To all of the honorees, we are so blessed to have you in our city. Wonderful job, my brother. President Harden and the uh, council uh, members, please continue the work that you are doing. Let us stand as we begin to sing, we shall overcome. We have not overcome yet, but we shall overcome. If you are comfortable in grabbing the hand of the person next to you, please do that. City of Columbus, thank you for being allowing me to partner with you once again on such a wonderful program. As we sing together, we shall overcome. On the count of three. One, two, three. We shall overcome. We shall